Professor well, Madam. I I I concur with the with the uh, uh, with the sentiment that my colleagues here have uh, expressed. Um, yes, it is important for us to go out and help those people in need. We have done it and we continue to do it. We are now in DRC, we were in Angola, we've been in a number of places where Kenyans have become uh, very adept and very successful uh, in making things happen. But while I have been there in 1989 as a member of the UN uh, 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 fact-finding support team, and I can tell you, Dibal, this place is a no man's land. It's wild west. And so to begin with, Dibal, is the perception that has been created. So the guys on the, on, on the ground, the boots on the ground, is getting ready for that already. It will be important, Dubal, if we have gone as a combined African Union support, or as Pan-African, where Caribbeans, Africans, Brazils are contributing so that we are going in as a team to help this black nation, which is ungoverned. Because what peace are you going to create when there's no governance, when there's no consensus in the country? How long are we going to be there? Who's going to pay for it? So these are the kind of questions that we need to really weigh very carefully before we step forward and say we're deploying 1,000 uh, 1, police force. What about Tanzania? What about DRC Congo? What about Ethiopia? What are their contributions? And so that's the reason I'm hesitant uh, for Kenya to stick his neck and, and then we raise the question, what's our national interest? What is our ideal national interest? We have to rethink. We have to really rethink about this. All right. Maybe the better question will be again, uh, since there was this call by the United Nations for troops to go to Haiti to try and salvage the situation, how many countries, aside from Kenya, have also contributed their troops to Haiti? I think by the time I was checking, it was only two countries. That is in two countries, inclusive of Kenya. So it's only one country, one more, so far. Maybe there's an update on it. I can't remember which country was this. Uh, I need to do my research. But we, w we need to ask ourselves, why are other countries greatly shy to also send their troops to Haiti? And we are doing it. Should we take the approach that Professor Naomi Damba is actually putting on the table? It should be uh, an African Union initiative as well and other countries can actually come as a blockhead, not a, or as in a, as they, they, they can come as a region, not as a single country. Well, first of all, uh, the process of intervention is long. Uh, it, there's a discussion that is usually going on about a particular country where things have fallen apart. And countries discuss in the Security Council, the corridors of Security Council, to say uh, the situation in country A is unattainable. Uh, it's getting out of control. Like in the case of uh, uh, Haiti, the system has completely collapsed. Haiti uh, is in an anarchic state. Uh, it is controlled by gangs. The state has no power. It is uh, restricted into a small area in the capital. The country is facing starvation, uh, economic collapse, uh, and um, there is an outbreak of diseases. So something must be done. The Haitians themselves are not able to help themselves. They are divided. Um, uh, there is an ideological uh, element to it. Uh, there is um, uh, the resource conflict going on at the same time for uh, control of the country. There are geopolitical uh, interests involving uh, the United States and uh, Canada and uh, because uh, Haiti is in the, 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 the northern hemisphere and it is of an interest to them. There are many things that are going on. So countries have been uh, sounded out to say, what can we do? And Kenya is an active member. We were on the Security Council until recently. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, we have a very competent uh, uh, ambassador, one of the most competent uh, 
uh, articulate and knowledgeable ambassadors you can have at the so we are consulted and as a result one when a country is consulted one country says no we cannot do it the other one says yes and you calculate on the basis of that mm -hmm. that ideally the intervention you need in Haiti should be led by an African or a Caribbean uh, or a Latin American country mm -hmm. the last intervention uh, peacekeeping intervention was done by Brazil it didn't work out um, and it failed because of the, uh, the complexities of, um, of, of Haiti. Haiti is not an easy place. It is a very hard nut to crack. But the, the, the crooks of the matter, let's you know, um, uh, sh uh, sift through the propaganda. There are people who are saying we should not intervene. I hear there are um, civil society. Civil society in uh, Haiti is just divided as our civil society is divided. There are different political and ideological positions. Mm -hmm. But whose interest is it for Haiti to wallow uh, in the crisis that it is in? Uh, for us and the world to watch. Haiti is not uh, on another planet. It is a country on our, uh, on our, uh, on our planet. We have an obligation to do something about it. Our country has been approached and it is accepted to take that role. And I think uh, we should look at it with an open mind. Is that uh, it, with all the complexities, historical complexities, mm -hmm. I am a, a student of Haitian history from CLR James uh, Black Jacobians uh, to, to the rise of Toussaint uh, Lovato. Um, and I understand that um, ultimately it is up to the Haitian to put their act together. But in this particular case, they need help. And if we can provide that help, and um, to a certain extent, uh, the new imperial interest of the United States and our interest as an African country that wants to do something for the people of Haiti converge, oh, what is wrong with that? And then this issue of the funding that people are talking about. All peacekeeping activities in the world are funded mostly by the United States and Europe, even in Somalia. ATMIS, the Africa Union mission there, it is African. It is Ugandans, it is Burundians, uh, it is um, Kenyans who are giving their life to keep Somalia alive as a, as a sovereign state. But the funding is paid by the Europeans. And now they have pulled the rug. Uh, what we can do is to, to, to decide as a region what we're going to do about Somalia, what we're going to do about South Sudan, and about um, Sudan itself. Right, but it but mm -hmm. Haiti uh, needs help at this particular moment. It needs an intervention. Should we leave that to the United States and Canada and Europe? Or should we as an African country that really cares about uh, uh, the, the peace and stability of people, African people and people of African descent, should um, give a helping hand? And in this particular case, I think uh, it, it is a positive thing that the president has offered uh, uh, our, uh, our services and is, is willing to deploy to a situation where we can make a difference as a country. And I think I know we can make a difference. It is a complex issue. It's a hard nut to crack, but we can do it. Mm -hmm. Not in isolation. We're not the only country that is deploying. There will be maybe four, five, six countries when the Security Council decides to deploy intervention. And we could be a, good, a force for good in dealing with this particular issue. Okay. The idea that Kenya Kenyan police would be uh, clashing with, um, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with Haitian um, uh, armed men or gangs in the streets of uh, Port-au-Prince is um, it's just a, um, uh, a Hollywood type of uh, um, uh, fiction. It doesn't work like that. We have been deployed to Congo, Eastern Congo in Goma, which is much worse uh, than any other place you can think of. But we have handled it very well, and um, we are playing a very positive role. Uh, in that situation, although even when we're deploying, I was of the view that uh, deploying to Congo was uh, the wrong decision and it could lead to um, massive casualties on the part of the Kenyans. But the Kenyans are well organized, they're well experienced, they've handled those situations very well in Somalia and in the DRC and other peace operations, and I can see that they would do the same uh, good in Haiti. So the question also that uh, abounds is uh, the the issue of the U.S. not willing to send their troops anywhere after the pullout of uh, their troops from Taliban. Why are they sending some to 
Haiti. That's they're not that. acceptable. Uh, the 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 consensus in Haiti is that uh, the United States has had ulterior no motives before. Uh, it has a yeah. so so it's got uh, imperial interest. designs on the on Haiti, and it has not worked for the Haitian people. So the United States and Canada are not as welcome as a force from Kenya. I mean, so what will be the reception that this funding is coming from the United States and they've had the history that is so steeped in uh, injustices, as they put it? No, no, that is just propaganda. I'm saying that we should really sift uh, okay. the reality from the propaganda. There is a lot of propaganda that uh, Kenya is this, Kenya is that. I think that is uh, just ri really unfortunate. We Thank have you. a professional force. Uh, when they are sent there, they will do a professional job. They will deal uh, that issue through a policy a framework uh, guided by international law, uh, a resolution supported by the United Nations. Uh, and I can see that uh, if there was any abuse uh, by our, our troops, they would be exposed and be removed. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. All right. Peter Kagonja has uh, prepared our headline yeah, as well. I, I, want to make, I want to make three points. First, to acknowledge that what Kenya is doing is right. At least it is, is a contribution yeah. to humanity and it's part of what we are supposed to do as part of our global uh, responsibility. Uh, therefore, deploying in the, uh, the Haiti is, is in itself uh, not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not a bad act. It's not a bad decision. Uh, any other president, uh, apart from uh, William Ruto, would do, do the same if called upon to do that. And I, as we said earlier, we have been called upon to do that. Uh, so well, there is no problem with the end, uh, the end and the moral uh, efficacy of yeah. that particular decision. It's not in question. What is in question and, and what is raising eyebrows across Africa, and that can be dealt with in itself, is the process, mm -hmm. the, 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 the means. First, the African Union has defined uh, its own, its own self as, as comprising of um, six regions, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, the north, the central, the west, the south, the east. Uh, those are internal, and then the diaspora. So when we, we meet as the African Union, that's it. And therefore, it, it is important to process this intervention, not, not only of Kenya, but any other African country that might want to intervene or to, to, uh, to, to, to intervene and help uh, Haiti, to process it within the African Union. In 2004, 2005, President Tambo Mbeki pro, 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 uh, processed his intervention in, in Haiti. Uh, from a diplomatic perspective uh, within the African Union. And uh, Aristide was basically hosted in South Africa for all my durations there uh, by the African Union, by South Africa with the, with, with the consent of the African Union. So just to appear that we are courageous, we are not, uh, a, you know, a John Wayne, You're basically shooting uh, your way into uh, the Wild West. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is that, that's one one thing. The second the second thing is is about our preparedness uh, as, as a people. I think what is coming from all these cartoons are pockets of darkness. Uh, whether we are talking about uh, our president carrying a bucket of uh, water which is reeking the uh, bucket with a hole, uh, the, it reminds me of the song, uh, or uh, or the praying and, and the, 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 the hole of darkness where you are shooting. Th th there is that darkness and I do know uh, Nur Gabo and the team uh, that, uh, that, that might be in charge of this uh, force are very knowledgeable people. I know them at a personal level. Very, very knowledgeable people. Uh, very experienced internationally in terms of their practice. Uh, people who are going to make the right decisions because they have made the right decisions before. But of course, we need to carry Kenyans with, uh, with us about our preparedness. In other words, is somebody getting out there Apart from what Washua is saying, that this is good, it is uh, there is chaos there, and but the, somebody has to do it, which is right. But how do we carry Kenyans with us in terms of the idea that this decision is good, that it is in line with our own policies, uh, that it is in line with our Pan-African policy, and that that we are not basically pulled by the nose by the Americans, uh, which which I don't believe in because there is an extent to which they can, they can do that, but I don't think in this particular case the Americans are pulling us by the nose. They are just calling upon a responsible state in the global uh, you know, uh, arena uh, to basically intervene. We've been called upon to do the same. We were called upon by, by the West to do something in Zimbabwe, which was a, another black hole, very, very dangerous. 
We did the same in Namibia, which was again uh, a very black hole. We read those missions. And we had our own difficulties in South Sudan at the beginning, uh, you know, to the point that one of our generals had to retreat, I mean, had to be uh, called back. We fought back and, 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 and made it happen. But the big, big point is that we need to carry Kenyans with us. And there doesn't seem to be sufficient preparation because the, the Kenyans who are going to go there are basically putting their lives on the line. And then we need to carry Kenyans with ourselves as to why we will you receive the body bags back mm. and feel that it was okay and that it was deserved. Now, when you tell Kenyans we're fighting in Somalia, they, you don't need to educate them. Why? Because they saw bombing in their schools. They are bombing the church. Mwesimua uh, here is a victim of that kind of a thing. You, so you don't go far for examples. But in Kenya, we don't have similar examples of Haiti. So we need to move beyond uh, conviction and demonstrate to the Kenyans Thank that you. this is something worth doing. Thank and you. we need to convince Africans that we are doing it for Africa, not for our own self aggrandizement. Fantastic. I think that's a, a good place to wind up. Let's just get our headline thoughts uh, from uh, each of you. I'll begin with you, Dr. Ombogi, your closing remarks. Um, well, uh, let me say uh, K Kenya is gearing to go in the international arena. As, as we have seen, uh, our president is young, uh, energetic, and, and really making moves uh, that are likely to put us in a certain uh, uh, stead in our foreign policy. I urge that uh, we, we do the same in, in, internally. Um, the, 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 the public sentiments, particularly with the standard of living, are very interesting and uh, if something is not done and done very quickly, then we have a recipe for uh, uh, conflicts and kills in, in, in our country. Uh, the successes that we have scored internationally, uh, we need to find ways of doing the same internally in listening more. Uh, to, 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 to the public. The listening is being done, uh, but I could wish that we do it uh, uh, in, uh, in, 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 in a much better way and inform the actions that we take every day uh, for those of us who are in government, for those of us who are in different institutions that serve the public. Okay. Professor Nomidama. Well, we just uh, have a, um, a, a golden opportunity on the world stage when the president uh, spoke at the climate summit and projected the interest to the whole world, not only Kenya, but Africa. Let us create a posture, the world, to benefit based on our national interest from this. One is the EV cars is a very critical development. And this is the point where we can turn to the US, turn to Europe, and said we need you to invest in our carbon uh, carbon uh, limitation and this is this is the real area uh, because as senator kerry said they're not going to turn money to kenya or to any other africa they're not going to pay unless we have a really legitimate case uh, which is compelling which american citizen can support and europe can support and here it is such that will elevate us to the middle class. Right, thank you. Let's hear from uh, our response Professor to, Our response to Ukraine, our response to Haiti, our positions on conflict in the Horn indicate that we have to go back to the drawing board to basically rethink the foundations of our foreign policy. And there is no alternative to that. By that we mean we need to revisit our position on positive neutrality guided by our national interests. And that is something that we have to do. We, have, we owe Kenya a debate on that. I think it is um, uh, important to acknowledge uh, uh, the sterling role that the president is playing uh, as our chief diplomat globally, raising our status, uh, our visibility, and our reputation as a country, uh, as an important country in the African continent and the world. And I think that needs to be supported. But also, we need to have a more consistent, more principled, and more balanced uh, foreign policy so that we can benefit uh, from the 
uh, dynamics that are now happening at the global stage uh, and uh, the focus of, of building uh, a new world order uh, that is more just and equitable and that would benefit Africa and the world. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hassan, who is a member of uh, Defense and Foreign Relations at the National Assembly. Thank you for coming through. Also, we just want to thank you, Professor Peter Kekwanger as well, who's a professor uh, and the CEO of uh, Africa Policy Institute for that uh, great uh, information and, of course, insights as well. Professor Naomi Damba, Senior Partner Glossop, and also an expert on foreign policy and defense, and also Dr. Ken Ombogi, who is a historian at the University of Nairobi. Thank you for coming through. And by the way, also we have uh, Dr. Joseph Magut, all right? Dr. Ambassador Joseph Magut, who is sending his uh, greetings. He says, great debate by the gentleman. Pass my regards to Professor Kagwancha and Obogi. Thank you. Right. We really do appreciate it. Kanenji. Kanenji is having a yeah. big conference today. Yeah, Dr. Kanenji is away. I think uh, there's a conference on South Sudan. Oh, yes, on, 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 on Sudan, yes. Uh, on Sudan, not on South Sudan. Sudan. On oh, it's, Sudan, on, yes. it's on Sudan, so yes. that's why he's a miss today. Yes. And also, Hamid Hashi is away on sabbatical leave. So <laughs> I'm going to refresh himself as well uh, to rejuvenate and, uh, of course, also uh, be up, bring himself up to speed as far 